name is Sarah Snyder and um, I've been spearheading this whole effort for the last six years and uh, boy is my head tired. <laughs> um, but it's been an absolute total team effort. There are about at least 50 people without whom this could not have happened. So I just, a lot of people, because uh, it's summer, couldn't be here, but I want to bring up to cut the ribbon uh, the people who are here who have participated in this process. I'm, the, the, if you, um, there we have these lovely blue programs. I don't know if everybody has one yet, but um, there, Sherry has them over there. If, if I were in charge of the, the Oscar broadcast, I would require every nominee to submit a list of who they had to thank. So it could just yeah. scroll across the screen and then they could say something more interesting. That's <laughs> so I, I, I have actually just written out our credits of everyone, I hope I haven't left anybody out, of all of the, the many organizations and individuals who have contributed to create this wonderful new public space in Sunderland. Um, so um, I'm gonna call up the members of the um, Community Pathways Committee, past and present, who have uh, um, been working down on the riverfront and um, raising money and uh, so come on up Gary, Nancy, um, Melissa, it's Melissa, here you are, bring your loppers. <laughs> th th this here is a, um, whoa, a ceremonial piece of bittersweet. I don't know if you've hung out down on the river but it's invaded. <laughs> <laughs> by Bittersweet and we spent many hours down there with help from um, Dave Sagan. Where's Dave? Up here. Come on up Dave. Dave is our wonderful Sunderland resident who's with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and he has been our fantastic consultant and partner to um, be uh, restoring the riverfront down there with making it as beautiful it's still a work in progress <laughs> um, and uh, so let's see and then of course um, getting the funding administering the grants takes a lot of work and the town of Sunderland has been behind this the whole way so I want to call up I see two of our select board members here David Pierce and um, and Scott Bergeron you want to come up and she <laughs> T takes a lot it t you know it's like bringing in money to the town we brought in about a total of four hundred and thirty five thousand dollars but all managing all that money and all of the stewardship of it is a lot of work like all the money we bring in creates work and cherry patch doesn't want to be up here but our town administrator <laughs> is the best she's the best the best way underpaid um, <laughs> so um, and then I want to um, let's see unfortunately I do have to mention one person who couldn't be here which is Carlos Nieto he's our neighbor our friend and a fantastic landscape architect he has been with us like this for you know at least three years um, and put in tons of hours to the project and made a beautiful plan um, donated m a lot of time and we thank Carlos um, yeah okay so and um, just as of yesterday our signs were installed and the beautiful beautiful signs you see were designed by Brent Hale Brent come on up <laughs> So he's also responsible for the farmy fresh and fun. Um, <laughs> but he did the beautiful signage when you get down on the river walk, enjoy those beautiful signs that he did. Um, and including this banner overhead. Thank you so much, Brent. He put tons of hours into it. Yeah. And um, now also, um, 
the Connecticut River Conservancy has been working for years and years and years on getting this river clean and they helped us um, to acquire the land for the boat ramp. We wouldn't have been able to fix up the boat ramp if it hadn't been for the Connecticut River Conservancy. And this is Andy Fisk, who's president of the Connecticut River Conservancy. He wanted to say, nine, he, said, he wanted to say 15 words. <laughs> Great, so I have a, a small gift here. So um, I have three samples of 4th Connecticut Lake. That is the source of the Connecticut River over 200 miles north of here. The Connecticut is a great river. It is a great river because 155 tributaries, each small and individual in their own right, come together to make it a great river. And I want to give folks here samples of 4th Connecticut Lake because just as these many tributaries combine together to make a great river, many of these individual actions throughout the watershed by communities all combined together to make it a great river. So improving river access, this was a huge project and it may feel small in the context of an 11,000 square mile watershed, but what you have done here is tremendous and continues to make the Connecticut River great. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm just gonna check a few, is Mark Durso here? That poor guy has, he's still out on the, working on the field. He has, he's running Sunderland Youth Baseball and he has been working for two weeks, practically every day down there to clean up the field and get it ready. So uh, I'm, he, he just is still working and Jim Yu and also are still working down there so they couldn't be here to help cut, but we really, really appreciate all their contributions. Now, um, I think uh, w the people I want to call up now are very significant in this whole process. Rob Powell and Chris White are the, keep the current keepers of the toll house at the end of School Street. And they, when they bought their house, they bought the riverfront land that now is the river walk. And they're so community oriented and um, they were willing to make a deal with the town. We did a land swap with them and they um, uh, uh, made it possible for that land for us to connect the boat ramp to our playing fields and to have the beautiful river walk. It just would not have happened without them. And we really, really <laughs> thank them. Yeah. And, and now they're surrounded by a park. <laughs> um, okay, so is anybody here from all states or Taylor Davis? Guess not. Okay, so the finally, who I want to call up is, um, I, is, is our state representative, Natalie Blay. We're so proud of. And We are, we are so fortunate to live in this Commonwealth. Um, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts contributed the, the, the majority of funds for this project through two different agencies. And we're very, very grateful for the Commonwealth and I'm, I'm having Natalie here to kind of stand in for the Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here you go. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. And thanks to everybody who's come out here today there are 175 communities across the Commonwealth who are CPA communities. And Sunderland, of course, became one in 2010, and I'm so proud of our community for doing that. CPA funds are used across the state for affordable housing, for the preservation of open space, and for the construction and rehabilitation of park spaces just like this one. And I'm so, so proud to be here today. We can see from this community gathering that this is a state program that truly lives up to its name. Because look at the community that has come here together today. Yes. Just a quick budget update. We're hoping to get additional funds for CPA. Right now there is, uh, there is something in the budget that's before the conference committee to bring the match up to 30% for our communities. It's currently at 11 We've seen how valuable this program is for all of our communities. I want to thank Sherry for her advocacy. She recently signed on to a letter in support of that increase. So thank you, Sherry.
So with that, So, on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Sunderland in recognition of your expanding the accessibility of community common ground with the creation of Sunderland, River, Sunderland Riverside Park. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. This is signed by Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, and by myself. And I just want to give Sarah a shout out. She's amazing. What you have done to make this happen over six years is really extraordinary. And we've all, you've touched each one of us in trying to pull this together. And so thank you very much. <laughs> Listen, doc Dr. Zeus said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And you too <laughs> can be part of this awesome team. <laughs> and you too can realize a vision for this town and this community. And I'm challenging everybody to kind of step up and become community champions. Um, I'm a little tired. I would like to pass the baton. <laughs> so I'm looking for people to pick up the baton. Um, and um, uh, so, oh, you, there, you'll see sign up sheets around. You can join the Friends of Riverside Park. Um, that uh, um, where's I, Rob Powell is organizing and there's sign up sheets around um, and uh, also there's a and, um, Sherry Patch has put together a vision board where you can go and contemplate what you want to see happen next in Sunderland and what you you know what's what's your dream project and there's a big board out there and you can just like dream <laughs> okay, so with that, um, let's all, I don't know if we can all fit here. I told everybody to bring their loppers. <laughs> so we'll just all squeeze in here to cut this ribbon. And then our friend Eric Goodchild's going to lead us into the park. Does anybody need loppers? All right. I'll take care of it. Okay. I'll swap off a little bit. No, no, I think we all do. Don't get your fingers in there. All right. All right. There we go. One, two, three. Oh, it's a 